Welcome back, Yadamoose here, and today we're going to be testing out the armor penetration test on automatons today. So that includes the tank and the hulk, so let's get right on into it. Alright, so we have our anti-material rifle here, and we are going to be first trying to take on a tank. So let's see how this does, full frontal armor. I mean, this might be a bad angle, let's see... Seems like it's somewhat able to hit him. It's having a hard time, but it seems like maybe towards the lower part it's able to do some damage. Okay. It's very hard to test against the tank just because there's no way to stop it. There's no way to slow it down. It seems like it's hitting him and not reflecting off, because normally when you reflect, you'll you'll either get the shield and bounce off icon, or you'll get like a, a blue streak that you'll normally see when it reflects off. But in a bunch of these shots, they haven't been reflecting off. We're almost out of ammo here, and it doesn't really appear to do any visible damage to this guy. Okay, yep. So, I mean, realistically, with like, almost the entire amount of ammo that the sniper comes with with a fresh sniper rifle, we weren't really able to do much to him. It didn't even look like he was damaged really at all. He seemed in pretty good shape. So, I don't think the anti-material rifle can even penetrate through it. And if it can, it's probably going to take you multiple rifles to even take it down. And with that being the case, you're just not really going to have time to do so, first of all. And second, it's not really going to be very efficient in terms of armor piercing. So, can it potentially hit the armor? Yeah, sure. But is it going to be effective, and is it going to take him down in a reasonable amount of time? Nah, probably not. So, I, I would say avoid using the anti-material rifle against tanks at all costs, really. Alright, so we have an anti-material rifle here against the Hulk. And he is currently stunned, so this is going to be the best shot here. It seems like those might be bouncing off, but it might be the angle. Let's see. Get a little closer. I mean, it seems like it could be doing damage, but I want to unload the full thing just to test it. One more. Okay, so limbs definitely can be hit by this, but it didn't seem like it was actually doing anything in terms of his actual main part of his armor, which is just under his head there. So it doesn't look like the anti-material rifle is actually going to do anything against these hulks. And it seems like it was kind of doing a similar thing with the actual tank itself. So I don't think this punch through is working because um, it does say it has light vehicle penetration, which it doesn't seem like it penetrates any armor really much at all. I mean, the legs are probably a little bit fortified, but not nearly as much as the chest piece. And I know that's going to be heavy armor. But for the most part, this definitely isn't great at thick armor piercing, which in the description, obviously, it's not exactly saying it's going to. But for the most part, I mean, the tank, it's it's not going to be great for that. It's really not going to be great for a lot of things, and it just bounces off too much. So I would say overall for an armor penetration weapon, this is definitely not going to be the choice, and it's still going to sit at the bottom as far as both lists go. I think as you know, a whole, it's not really the best in terms of anti-tank, even with it being in the category of such. Alright, so now we have our auto cannon here. We're going to be trying to test this out on a Warlord, or a Hulk. And let's see here. Okay, we have a few bots we need to deal with here. That auto thing is l keeping it uh, keeping it locked in that EMS, which is nice. Or 
or one magazine. Two, actually, technically. Because this does load two at a time. That's two total. Still nothing. So, it seemed like I was getting shots, but I'm not 100% sure if that was actually doing damage or if that was just a fluke and it was just hitting him. It seemed like it was doing damage. It didn't, it didn't look like I was getting the shield ricochet icon, so it seemed like it was doing its job as far as it needed to be, anyways. Reload that. Okay, I mean, I don't, I don't really see a huge difference in terms of the armor penetration and things like that. So, I'm not sure how well this is penetrating his armor. It looks like it's actually doing some some damage, but not a lot. Okay, let's get this loaded back in. Take those guys out because they're a pain. All right. So we've almost gone through all of the ammo on this thing. I need a team reload. Oh, yeah, so that's all the ammo. Okay, so, I mean, as far as armor penetration, it seems like it's working. I mean, he's slower. It took his leg out at some point. So, can it penetrate the armor? It seems like it. But is it very good at it? Not really. So, as far as the, as far as those guys go, the Hulks, it's, it's not great. Uh, I would, I would definitely put it above the Antimaterial Rifle, just because that wasn't doing any armor penetration at all. But, uh, this seemed to be doing it. As far as actually getting through the armor. They have really thick armor, so... Definitely not the most effective way to take them down by dealing armor damage, but in terms of pure armor penetration, I would say the auto cannon isn't doing too bad. So, definitely would put it above the anti-material rifle at the moment, but so far it's still just kind of barely above it, just because it didn't really take them down with an entire backpack worth of ammo. So, that is something to consider in terms of how well it actually does armor penetration. Alright, so here we have our auto cannon versus the tank which the frontal armor is going to be the hardest on this guy, so we're going to try shooting that first. And give me a reload here. One more, there we go. Okay, that was deflecting because I was at a bad angle. But it seems like it is doing some armor penetration. It's going to be a lot harder to test on this tank because the, the EMS doesn't actually do anything in terms of stunning. So I'm not really going to get a lot of perfect shots on this guy. Um, and we, we might not get a whole lot in terms of just availability for it. So we'll see. I mean, the side's not going to be too bad either. That's going to be pretty decently... It's going to be pretty decently armored. But the front is really what I would like. Okay, that deflected. So it seems like it's it's definitely doing the armor penetration, but it's not it's not doing a great job at it. So full frontal armor penetration, not great. Is it good for hitting the vent in the back? Most likely. But again, this isn't really more about how effective it is. It's more about can it penetrate the armor? And while it probably could do a little bit to do so, it doesn't seem like it's very effective at it. So I still think the rating to keep it above the anti-material rifle is pretty accurate in terms of armor penetration so far. So at this point, definitely not going for anti-material rifle as far as armor penetration, and the auto cannon is a little bit better, but not by much so far. Okay, we have a Eat 17 against a Hulk here. If we can get the thing. There we go. Alright, so let's see what this does here. Okay, so that was a full frontal shot. Didn't take him down in one. We do have another one. Probably gonna die because of the burning. That's okay. We still have another one over there that we'll go grab. Here is shot number two. All right, so that took him down. 
Two shots with the Eat is going to take down your Hulk. So that's good to know. Uh, it's pretty effective against the higher armor targets, which is nice, because it was able to take down the Bile Titan in two as well. So it's good to know that it's equally as impressive as that, as far as armored targets go. Seems like it's pretty effective. So, so far, the Eat 17 is looking like a pretty good option here in terms of just armor penetration, because I was shooting straight at the front plate, no headshot, and it was able to take him down in two. So it's pretty good. Pretty viable, I would say. All right. So we have an 817 against a tank here. So we're going to hit it right in the front. Didn't really seem to affect him very much. Didn't really seem to do much damage at all. Let's see. Yeah, so that is the full frontal armor. It didn't really seem to do anything to him. He seems pretty unaffected, to be honest. I'll try a couple more to see if I can get any more damage on him. But so far, it seems like the frontal armor is just way too hard to pierce. At least with this weapon, specifically. Sending down fortification. Let's have this land real quick so we have a little bit of breathing room here. Okay. Get rid of these guys. All right. Yeah, so after three shots, it, it really doesn't seem like it's doing much. Let's try four. Oh, or I'm just going to get annihilated by another tank. Okay, cool. But I mean, three shots and it, it, it looks relatively unaffected. I mean, that's that's pretty tough armor. Because those are those were definitely direct impacts. So, I mean, that's pretty insane, to be honest. Okay, yeah, so, I mean, that that's pretty armored right there. And I don't know if that's meant to be shot, but, I mean, we, we hit four shots on that direct point of armor. And so, that, that's that's pretty insane. Like, that's not doing anything. So, I, I don't know that Eat 17 can really pierce that portion of armor. It might be worth testing another one on, like, maybe a higher spot. But it seems like that frontal part seems to be the heaviest armored, which is kind of the point of the test. So it doesn't look like it can take that portion out unfortunately, but it might be able to take out a different portion, depending. So, so far, like I said, not really looking great in terms of use case against a tank, at least in the full frontal armor, it seems like it's literally doing nothing. So, not really looking great for the E-17. I'm getting kind of bullied and probably will die. Yep, because it won't heal. So, yeah, um, probably not going to bother with any more of that, because, I mean, I could probably hit him in the top portion, but, I mean, that's, that's probably not going to be as armored as the front which is kind of the whole point of the test. And so I, I don't think the Eat 17 can really penetrate through that armor. So, I mean, to be honest, it, it's about the same level as the anti-material rifle, to be honest. It seemed like the it seemed like the auto cannon might have been doing a little bit better in terms of that armor piercing. So with that being said, it seems like that's not really the way to go um, for armor piercing here. So, so the list right now would have to be anti-material rifle, and then it would have to go Eat 17, and then the auto cannon. Now, we didn't take it down with either, but it did seem like it was doing damage with the auto cannon, as far as when I was able to see. Next up, we have the recoilless rifle. We're going to be trying to do this on a Hulk to see what this damage is on them, and to see if it can two-shot them just like the E-17 did. So let's go ahead and find our Hulk here. All right, so we have our Hulk there. Let's take it on right there. Boom, frontal shot. So that was one. And there's two. Okay. So it's about the same. In terms of Hulks, it seems like it's about the same as the E-17. So, I mean, if you have a team, the E-17 isn't going to be as useful just because it's more disposable and you only get the two shots, whereas the recoilless, you have a little bit more ammo and your team can help you reload much faster. So you're able to fire off a lot more rounds in that respect. So as far as the Hulks go, they're pretty equal on footing. Um, so, I mean, if it does well against the tank, it'll definitely be put much higher. But so far, against the Hulk, it, it's pretty equal as far as this test goes. So it can armor penetrate just as good. All right, so we have our recoilless rifle against the tank here. I'm expecting similar results to the E-17. If we can't get a better spot here to reload. It seemed like it didn't really do much against that guy. Ow. Yeah, 
So that doesn't seem like it's really doing anything. So two shots in. Not looking like any damage has been done. Okay, that's three shots. Okay, that was about four shots. Similar spot as the Eat 17. So I'm thinking... I'm thinking that spot just can't be hit. Like, I, I don't think... As far as it being the hardest part of the armor, I, I just don't think it can be penetrated by explosive type weaponry so far from what it seems like um realistically I, I don't think i'm gonna be able to really get my stuff back here there's way too many bots at this time so we'll see we might be able to get another couple shots in here so far but i mean right now as it looks it, it doesn't look like it's gonna be able to do the same level of damage um that something else might be able to especially it's you know against that portion of the tank it's it's just too heavily armored it's, it's very armored, it's very hard to take down, which, you know, like I said, it's really the point of the whole video, um, is just trying to discover if it can penetrate it or not, and so far, explosives don't really seem to be able to do the job against that specific portion of tanks. Okay, well, that was my attempt. Um, I thought I, uh, thought I'd be able to maybe get my equipment there, but no. So, as far as the recoilless rifle, again, we, we hit four shots, same tank, same spot, uh, seems like launchers really just aren't able to penetrate that portion of the tank. Now, could it could it do the back and the side? Most likely, because there's a vent in the back, which is a weak spot. And the side, I believe, is also a weaker portion of armor. But the front is really what we wanted to test, just because that is going to be the heaviest point of armor. And so it doesn't look like either the 817 or the recoilless rifle is going to be able to penetrate that whatsoever. So as far as armor penetration goes, those both kind of failed the test. They do great against hulks, but otherwise they're not doing great against tanks, which isn't a great option when it comes to automatons as far as armor penetration so far. All right, next up we have the spear. This is the auto homing in launcher that you do have to lock in on in order to fire. So this one we can't exactly control too much in terms of where we hit the actual Hulk itself. So we're gonna try our best to hit the front of it, but that may not exactly work out the exact way I'm thinking, uh, just because of the way the tracking works on this weapon. So. Okay, that didn't quite hit him. I think it hit a box. Oh, and there's a rocket straight to the face. Cool. Okay. All right, so even being close, not really not really a single shot. Okay, so two shots. Could have been different from a different distance, but as far as explosives, it kind of seems like it's going to be similar all around as far as the hulks go. Typically, it seems like their armor gets pierced by a couple of explosive rounds. So in that term, Spear, Eat-17, and Recoilless Rifle all take them down in a couple of shots, which really isn't bad as far as armor penetration goes. The real test is going to be the tank. Now, with the Spear, it's going to be a little bit harder just because the tank itself is going to be not exactly easy to hit with the front with this just because of the lock-on. So we're going to try that, see how it goes. I'm, I'm not expect. I mean, this is probably going to be better only because it's going to be harder to hit that hardest point of armor. So this is going to be the spear against the tank here. We can't really unfortunately control where that lands. So that was usually probably going to be the outcome of that. Just because the top probably isn't the heaviest armored portion. I might try to shoot it again from the front and see if maybe we get a different result. That'll all kind of depend if I can actually find another tank. Because they're kind of a pain to find. I, I was searching and I didn't really see any missions specifically for tanks. There's a lot of missions for hulks, but uh, unlike the bugs, it doesn't look like there's two separate mission types. Unless I was just getting really unlucky in my RNG uh, as far as missions go. But yeah, it didn't, it didn't seem like there was much in terms of tanks missions specifically. So... We'll see if we can maybe get another one here and see if we can maybe shoot it from the front. But so far, as far as weapons go, I mean, the spear is going to be the best choice as far as explosives at this point in terms of armor penetration, just because of the inability to control it. Here's another one now. Let's see if we can get another frontal shot here. Okay, so here's a frontal shot. Okay, so it's it's always gonna hit that little top part there. So I don't I don't think I can test the frontal armor. Um, it's because it's always just gonna lock onto that. So I mean I can I can maybe fiddle with the angles and things like that specifically, but overall I, I don't think I'm gonna be able to hit that specific portion of armor right there. 
which is going to be the heaviest portion. So overall, as far as what the spear can hit, uh, technically it's going to be the strongest launcher as far as armor penetration so far. Uh, in terms of like automatons versus bugs, so far it's it's much better than the last test, uh, just because it can't really hit that hardest part, and it's going to take down that tank in one shot. So, with that being said, it is better in that respect. And a little bonus about the spear is, you can actually shoot the outpost factories that the automatons use to spawn. So you can you can launch on those from quite a far distance actually, and so that's that's another positive of it. Not that that really matters, but. Um, that's just kind of a little side note about the spear specifically. Okay, so we have our railgun here. This is our last weapon that we're testing as far as the armor penetration goes. And we're going to keep it in safe mode just for consistency with the test. So we're going to get rid of that guy real quick. So let's see, we got one, two, three... Okay, so about four shots, maybe five, um, if the first one might have overpenetrated. So four to five shots isn't too bad. Uh, that's about as many as it would have taken to the face with the uh, charger. So that's not too bad as far as use case goes. I mean, five without, you know, having too much ability to get access to their head sometimes. I mean, five's not a bad use case. I mean, if you can hit them directly in the head, that will definitely take them down in one shot with the railgun. But I mean, five isn't too bad for what is supposedly the heaviest armor, uh, at least from what I understand. It, it was in the first one. I, I don't know if they still consider those guys the heaviest armor in this one, because the tanks seem to be a little bit heavier. But as far as that goes, still, not bad. So is it viable for hulks? Absolutely. I would say this is actually pretty good. And if you can get headshots, that's definitely even more effective on that. And you don't have to have a backpack, so that's a bonus. All right, so we have a tank and the railgun here, which, again, we're going to keep in safe mode. Just for consistency. Alright, so there's one, two, three, four. It doesn't seem like it's doing anything. Kind of like some of the other weapons we've tested on the front there. It doesn't really seem to be penetrating anything. I'm not sure that it will overall. We're going to keep trying, but I don't think it's going to hit past that armor. It's not really giving us like a deflect symbol, like it's not working necessarily, but it's also not giving us any signs that it is. Okay, if you could get out of that rut and come this way, that'd be helpful. All right. So right now we've used nine shots and so far nothing. Not even a trace of damage, it looks like. And that seems like it's probably gonna be the case. I mean, we're almost halfway through all of the ammo that a railgun typically comes with, and it doesn't even look like that tank's really been affected, so... I mean, I, I just don't think that frontal part of the armor is actually pierceable, for the most part. I mean, the spear was able to take it down, but not because it pierced the armor, because it was able to hit the top of it specifically. So, I mean, can it pierce it? I don't think so. I just think the tank just has too heavy of armor. Okay, yeah, so that was 11 shots, and, I mean, 9 more I, I don't really see gonna, you know, help much. I mean, we'll try it, because it might actually be doing something here. I think the tank's on fire. But that might just be because of the over-penetration, which would, I mean, that would, in fact, kind of be the case. I mean, that would prove our point here of can it penetrate the armor. That wouldn't be a bad thing. I think that didn't reload, but... Okay, I went through the fence. Very cool. I'm wigging out. All right. Okay, I got shot midair. That was terrible. Okay, so, I mean, let's see. It's on fire. I mean, let's see. Okay, I mean, it took it down after all of the ammo. So, is it very viable? I mean, not really. 
But can it armor penetrate through the toughest part of the armor? Yeah, it seems like it can. So, I mean, as far as the railgun goes, I mean, it's 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 better than the explosions just because it can actually over penetrate through it. Now, whether or not it's actually hitting directly through the front part or in doing damage or the back part because of the penetration of the railgun, I mean, that's kind of the whole point of the test, though. So, I mean, realistically, I feel like the railgun is probably second best at this point. All right, so my final thoughts on the armor penetration test against automatons is as follows. So the worst being the anti-material rifle. It doesn't seem like it's penetrating like it's supposed to, and it describes that it is supposed to punch through light vehicle armor, but I'm not sure that that's entirely working as it's supposed to, because it doesn't really seem like it's doing much. Now, would it be able to penetrate maybe some legs on a charger, or maybe some limbs on a hulk kind of a thing? Probably, yeah, but the, the whole point of the test was to punch through the hardest part of the armor, and the anti-material just couldn't do that on any, either the tank or the hulk. So I would say it's going to sit at the bottom for this test as well as the last one, unfortunately. I hope it's not working as intended, and I hope it does get a balance change at some point, because it is an interesting weapon. Next up, we have the autocannon in fifth place, because it is a little bit better as far as armor penetration than the anti-material, and it has the ability to team reload, which will allow you to get off quite a lot more shots. And this also does allow you to take out legs and things like that as far as like limbs go on pretty much all of the heavy targets and you're able to do so in a quick manner because of that team reload so i will say that has an advantage over it because of that but not by much so it still does sit in that fifth place next we have the eat 17. now this is slightly better than the auto cannon because it is able to take out a hulk in two shots but i will say it couldn't take out the tank at all so we wasted four of these on a tank and it didn't seem to take them down. Of course, this is through the heaviest part of the armor and not the most efficient way of taking on the tank, but in that aspect, it did fail the test on one front. And so it sits just at number four above the auto cannon. Now we have the recoilless rifle, which is similar to the E-17. It took two shots to take down a Hulk, which is similar to the E-17, but it also could not take down the tank even after four shots. So they both are the same in that regard. However, the team reload option on the recoilless rifle is going to put it above the E-17, because if you do have a team, it's going to be much better and much more efficient in taking down heavies, as long as you're aiming for points that the recoilless rifle can actually penetrate, such as the side of the tank, the legs of a charger, things like that. So for that regard, it definitely takes over the position of number three above the E-17. Second, we have the railgun. Now this was able to take down both. So it took down the Hulk, and it took down the tank. So the Hulk, it took about five shots straight to the armor. So it was able to take them down in a reasonable amount of shots, I would say. Now, I don't know if this is being inconsistent with the railgun or not, because it was a little inconsistent and still continues to be on Bile Titans. So I'm not 100% sure if this is the case with Hulks as well, but it could be. Now, all these tests for the railgun were done in safe mode. So keep that in mind as well. I haven't still noticed a difference in unsafe mode, but that is something I can test a little bit more. But for this test and for the sake of consistency, we did use the safe mode on the railgun. But for the tank, it did take all 20 shots, but it did get the job done. So for that reason, I will put it at second because it was actually able to do the job on both the Hulk and the tank. Lastly, we have the spear because it was able to two shot like the recoilless and the 817 on a Hulk, but it was able to one shot the tank only because the lock-on targeting, uh, because we weren't able to hit the front specifically, and because it can't like choose where it's actually shooting, it has that advantage in that regard, so we couldn't actually technically punch the hardest part, but in any case, we're not going to really be able to. We probably could have fiddled with the angles just a tad, but I mean, it would have taken a lot of effort, and probably it's not going to happen very often that you're going to actually hit that hardest part of the armor, so more often than not, you are going to get that tank one shot. So that's why it sits at the number one spot for this video, and I think it's going to take the crown. I am a little sad to see the E-17 drop so far from the last test, because... It did pretty good against the Bile Titan. Um, I will say it was much better in the last test in comparison to this one. And the spear just took that top spot and rose to the top. Another good thing about the spear, like I mentioned before, was that it can take out outposts and spore spears. So all around has good advantages and it reaches the top of this test. So that's kind of where we're at as far as automatons. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you guys so much for making it this far. And if you did, and if you like this, please go ahead and like the video and give a sub. It helps out a lot. And if you guys have any questions or anything you guys would like to see in the future, please let me know in the comments below, as well as anything I might have forgotten or anything you guys are curious about with this test. Again, thank you guys for being here, and I'll see you in the next one.